So art for me has always been something that I never have to do, but I always want to do whenever I'm not doing it, I want to be painting. And it's one of those things where regardless of if I make money doing it, it I feel like it makes me a better person. The more I do it, I feel it affects my attitude, um, affects my relationships. Uh, it affects my whole outlook on life when I'm able to create things. You can have a bad day, you can be dealing with, um, you can be dealing with whatever's going on in your life and, uh, and then everyone has their own thing that they do that makes them feel better and for me that's always been painting. So no matter how tired I am, no matter what my situation is, um, if I'm able to get myself to get out there, go to my studio, start working, all that other stuff just sort of fades away. Um, it's no, it's no replacement for therapy, but that's kind of, it's, it's my time to just make and create and do what I want to do, um, without having to worry about anything else. three brothers, I'm um, the youngest, and I was fortunate that uh, having my mom as an artist, she always encouraged us to pursue that as, to pursue the arts in general. She was always taking us to museums, taking us to galleries, showing us stuff, giving us assignments. Um, where I was growing up, the first schools that I went to in grade school and for freshman year of high school didn't really have much in terms of art programs, but she was always someone, she would always find classes for me to take, um, you know, at the community college during the summer or after school programs or just um, sort of showing me different, exposing me to the arts in general which I think was really great for me growing up and definitely fostered that interest as a way of expressing myself. Um, I did what a lot of little kids do growing up when they're drawing, which is, you know, looking at comic books and trying to draw your super favorite superhero. And then after that, you start, you know, making up your own superheroes. And I think, some of that still exists in my work now and I've just sort of combined all these little things that I was interested in but um what really what also really helped me was in addition to you know the support my parents and the people around me always gave was when I moved to a different school my sophomore year of high school uh, up to Winchester they had a really good arts program that had a lot of different options available to me to the point where by my senior year I was taking, you know, 75% of my classes were either art or art history. So I was able to explore photography and sort of making digital art and some sort of like rudimentary printmaking and painting and drawing. And I think that helped me a lot being able to have all these different outlets for my art so that when I got to school I when I got to Rhode Island School of Design I didn't initially know exactly what I was going to major in I had always just sort of done drawings and loved doing it and didn't really know how how that could translate to anything else so I initially was supposed to be a graphic designer but I didn't like the idea of sitting in front of a computer all day and not you know, making, not physically making something. And then I was supposed to go into, and I actually did go into illustration for one semester. And I love my classes, but 
I couldn't see myself doing that as a career. So I ended up going into printmaking, which I loved because it allowed me to combine a lot of the different things that I liked from photography and digital art and drawing. And it allowed me to take all those things and through silk screening, I could quickly combine, I, I could quickly combine all those different things that I love visually in it and incorporate them into my paintings easily. And although I don't silk screen anymore per se, I've sort of found ways of mimicking that the look of a silk screen of building up all these different layers with all these sort of different types of images and colors. And I think, I don't know if I would have followed that had I stayed where I was out in the Midwest without access to all these other different programs and without all the stuff that my mom was pushing me to do and people around me were pushing me to do. of my studio at Fringe in Union Square is the fact that I'm surrounded by people who aren't necessarily artists, but there are people who work in the creative field. There are people who are starting their businesses from the ground up, and it's really inspiring. It's something that um, I could see with my mom being an artist and being surrounded by people at Rhode Island School of Design, who are artists, who are really, really pushing as hard as they could to do what they love. And I think that's really important to have around you as an artist, is to have people in your life that are supportive of what you're doing, that want to push you to do more. Uh, it's easy as an artist to sort of, you know, get stuck and you just without any sort of outward influence, it's easy to just sort of keep doing the same thing, keep doing the same thing. And it's, it's good to have people around you pushing you all the time. per se that um, that I can point to to say like that's the person that wanted that made me want to get into being an artist it was a lot of different things and in my work I've tried to pull from all those different sources to create something new um, growing up it was you know comic books and then seeing um, religious artwork, like Renaissance masters, seeing their etchings and seeing their paintings and just being impressed by the, the technical skill that they had. And then from there, I started getting more into being more impressed by people who had a very distinct visual style, like Basquiat, but while making these beautiful combinations of colors, we're also sort of using it to express a lot more of how they felt. And, you know, in my work, I try to combine as many of these different things that I see that I like. And a lot of the images come from all different sources. So, you know, there'll be a, an etching by Durer, and then there'll be, a, you know, photograph of a clown on the side of a road and then there'll be sort of freeform writing mixed in and just sort of gestures and you know for every painting I try to combine all these different things that I think are visually interesting 
And also, I think when you display something in a certain way, the language that you use influences how people will read it. And I have my own interpretation while I'm working on something that changes as I go along, but I don't think the viewer needs to know exactly what each little element that's in the painting means to me. I want to build these dense paintings that allow people to stare at them and sort of draw their own conclusions about what it's about and discover new things in the paintings. And they can have a completely different interpretation of what that painting is about than I do, and I think that's okay. Thank you.